Well, good afternoon, my friends. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to do another segment in the Hardanger Book of Knowledge. And today's lesson is on the four-sided openwork stitch. Um, let me show you a sample here of what it will look like stitched. And I did this. This is actually larger than it would probably look on your piece. Um, because this happens to be on a piece of 18 count fabric. So I wanted it big enough so that you could see exactly how the stitch is done. There is another name for this stitch that I will include in the drop box um, so that if you ever want to look it up, you can find it under either one of those names. Um, the name in the drop box or a four sided open work stitch. So I have also taken a photograph of the stitch diagram out of Janice Love's book, um, hold on, Fundamentals Made Fancy. Okay, so that is the book that you can find this stitch diagrammed in if you have the book or if you so choose to purchase the book. They are a bit hard to find. But um, with a little bit of investigative work, they, they can be found. So let's get started with how exactly we do the stitch. You can follow along in the diagram if you like, um, but really it is not as difficult as it looks. Nine times out of 10, the stitches that are used in hardanger embroidery look so difficult. And when you combine them together, they look amazing and yet they are just many simple stitches put together to make something wonderful. So you're going to leave in a way tail that which we will work in later. I'm just letting mine short because this is a demonstration and I don't want it getting in my way all the time. So let's see, we're going to come up at number one. All right, and you can see that on the diagram. You're going to count over two threads and down two threads. And you're going to insert your needle at number two. And then you're going to come up at number three. Okay, so that is two threads below your initial point where you came up. And pull it through. Now, we're going to count down and over two threads. So the easiest way is you're going to come up two threads below your previous stitch, and you're going to come up in the bottom of that previous stitch. And that is the start of the diagonal. This stitch is always worked. Well, I guess it can be worked in a line, but the, all the times I've used it, it's always been worked on a diagonal. So now we're going to, again, two threads away from the bottom of the previous stitch and come up in the bottom. Okay. So that's three stitches. We're going to two threads below and again, come up in the bottom. And we're going to do this one yet. So that, that's, I did more. This can go on for however many stitches or however long you require that diagonal to be. It's your, you know, it depends on your pattern or um, what you're making, okay? When you get to the point that you need to turn the corner and go the opposite direction, really this is, a little tricky till you get used to it but it's really not hard so I'm going to come up two threads away from that previous stitch all right I'm going to insert my needle but instead of coming up at the bottom of this stitch I'm going to come up two threads to the right of that stitch so this is how you turn a corner, okay? So when you wanna switch directions, instead of coming up at the bottom of the stitch, 
you count over two threads from that bottom and come up there. All right. So now we have the start to be able to go up the hill. Your next stitch, you're going to come up in the bottom of the stitch you just completed. And then in the stitch, you're going to go two threads directly up into this completed stitch. So you're going to go into the base of that stitch, which is the last one on this diagonal. Okay. So now you have made the corner turn. So we're ready now to go two threads from this stitch. And we're going to work up the hill two threads from this stitch. And it's the process now is the same until you get to the top of your hill. All right, two threads from this stitch. And I find this the easiest rather than to keep counting over two up two. It's just as easy. Now this is a little bit sometimes hard to see because it's 18 count fabric and okay two threads from this stitch okay two threads from this stitch okay hold the phone hold the phone if i want to make my diagonals even let's go back here Oh, okay. I'm going to start this stitch over again. So my last stitch, I came up here. All right. So normally we're at the peak again. Normally to keep going, I would come up here. But remember, we want to turn the corner. So I'm going to come up two threads to the right. Okay, you with me yet? Please feel free to stop the video at any time to follow along. So we're two threads for the, from the right, and now you see we're ready to go down this way. Okay, so now we're going to go back up here in the peak, the peak of the mountain, and we're going to come up in this peak. You all see that? Okay, so now we can work our way down. So again, it's the same. Two threads away, come up. And all these surged ends. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Gotta cut that puppy off so it stops getting in the way. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay. You all with me yet? It's not hard, is it? It's really kind of easy. Two threads away, come up in the base. Two threads away, come up in the base. Two threads away, come up in the base. So now we are at the lowest part of our valley. So now, do you remember what we do? Do we want to come up here? Or do we want to come up? Let's see if I can do this with my left hand. Or do we want to come up over here? 
which do you think? You're right. We want to come up over here because we are at the lowest point of our valley. And this stitch marks the bottom of the valley. Okay, so now, do you remember what's next? We're going to come in here, and we're going to go straight up to there. Did you guess that one? Did you get it right? Okay, all right. Now, we're back to doing exactly what we did before. Two away. Two away. Two away. Now we're going to move this over a little bit so we can see here. So you can see here what I'm about to do. All right. Two away. Okay. Now. This next stitch is going to be, okay, I want to go down. I want to go down one more. This is what the last peak, all right? So again, do you remember what we're going to do? You got it. You got it. We're going to go down here. No, 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 no. We're not coming up there. We're going over here. Two away. Pull it through. Go back up to that stitch. Down to the inside peak. Okay. You're doing great. Hang in there. You're doing good. Let's keep going. Down to the bottom of the valley. And this stitch, again, is one that I normally, you can do it in hand like this, or you can put it in a hoop. But if you put it in a hoop, again, make sure it's loose enough that you can manipulate your fabric. Because once again, this sequence is best done, in my opinion, is best done as a sewing motion. It helps you keep your place a bit easier. Again, just my opinion. So now we are going to go and put the second row on because this stitch is always done in two journeys. Okay, your, this is your first journey that we just did. Now to complete the stitch, the second journey is going back, and what it's going to do is double up on these inside stitches, okay? So in order to make that turn, we're going to go down and come up as if we're doing one more stitch. And now we're going to Go two away, but we're going to come up in that same hole that we just came up in before. Okay, so that completes the valley. See, because we're even now with this. So that completes our valley. Now we want to go back up to the peak because we're going to go around again, but we're going to stay on this bottom side of our hills and valleys or our peaks and valleys. So now I'm going to begin the process all over again. I'm going to go two away. And I'm going to go one, two so away. We went down here. We come up straight across. Okay. 
we're going to, I'm actually going to turn it this way. Okay, so I'm working backwards. I'm going to go two out from here and come up at the base. So, so with this last stitch, you're going to come up two to the right away from it. If you turn your work that it's 180 degrees upside down, this is what you do. So I'm going to come up two away, and there I'm going to go over this stitch to there. I'm going to go two away to here. Now we're going to turn the corner again. So do you remember? We're going to go down at the peak and come up to to the right. All right. We're going to come backwards down at the peak and come up at the other peak. Okay. So now we're ready again. Okay. Got to find the right thread. Two away. Two away. Okay, turn another corner, come down up here, all right, and get my big hand out of the way. We're going to come up two over from this peak, going to back up in this same stitch. Come up in the top of that peak, and then we're going to go down this side just as we did before. So that, my friends, is the four-sided open work stitch. And again, you can work these peaks and valleys as far as you need to. You know now how to turn the corner. The diagram is here that you can see it um, on the screen. And that is the four-sided open work stitch. So with that, I am going to say thank you for joining me today. I am so glad that you all are here. I hope you found this video helpful. And remember, in cross stitch and hard hanger, there are no rules, only the ones you set for yourself. So have a great day and I will catch you the next time.